Bedford bomber sections are built in a number of huge plants and finally assembled and made ready for the air in several separate giant shops. Genesis of the Beaufort, uranium in sheets, the raw material from which the bulk of the aircraft will spring. Every sheet must be exactingly tested for hardness and possible metallic flaws. The Rockwell tester does it. This vitally important work is safely entrusted to a woman. The approved sheet is marked out from a pattern. Nothing is wasted, and the parts of this sheet cut away will go to make up smaller components. The production stream flows to the routing machines, which accurately slice through half a dozen marked out duralumin sheets at a time. Experienced sheet metal workers rapidly mold the cut metal into the component parts of the aircraft. Ribs, stays, outer skin. On dozens of similar jigs, the sub-assembly of parts goes on. Extreme accuracy is demanded. The completed subsection is pickled in an anodizing bath to make it weather resistant and to prevent corrosion. A pipe may be bent without distortion by making use of the recently discovered zero bend metal, which hardens quickly but will melt again on immersion in hot water. The operative bends it to the desired shape and there can be no distortion because the metal core prevents it. The bending completed, the pipe is merely immersed in hot water again and the metal run out. Simple, but what a time and money saver. Pipes are tested under pressure much above those they are normally expected to carry. The safety factor is a vital consideration in aircraft construction. Women play an increasingly important part in aircraft construction. They are extremely adaptable after training in specially organized technical schools. It's a changing world and male dominance recedes apace. There are 36,000 parts in a Beaufort, counting a complete engine and propeller as only one unit. Someone had to be found to manufacture each of those 36,000 parts accurately and in quantity, plus the complete engine. Passing rapidly to another sub-assembly, we find the nose section being fitted with its permanent covering, which is not celluloid as may appear, but a thick and durable clear plastic material. Here is an undertaking of which every Australian should be intensely proud. Where three years ago hundreds were employed in aircraft production, today tens of thousands toil. A country which did not produce even a motorcycle is today making a modern torpedo bomber with twin engines delivering between them 2,400 horsepower. And every nut and bolt, every instrument, every tiny detail of equipment in that plane is Australian made. are also completed in this plant. Both tail and main fuselage section then go to one of the final assembly shops where they are met by wing sections and engines. A main assembly plant where parts made in many factories go together miraculously like a giant completed jigsaw to form the Beaufort torpedo bomber. fuselage section moves up to join its wings. Made in separate shops, the parts must dovetail perfectly. The tolerance allowed is minute. The Beaufort bomber has a speed approaching 300 miles per hour. It can carry one ton of bombs or a torpedo capable of crippling a battleship. As a reconnaissance plane, the Beaufort has a range of 2,000 miles. She is almost as maneuverable as a fighter. The Beaufort is so completely armed defensively that any fighter would have the utmost difficulty in shooting her down. Important equipment is the rubber dinghy, apparently frail seagoing craft which has saved so many valuable lives in this war. 
the rubber boat is inflated from a small gas bottle containing compressed carbon dioxide. It will support the Beaufort's complete crew. The Beaufort is powered by two 1,200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney twin wasp engines, every tiny section of which is built in this great shop by Australian workers. The building of this engine alone is a terrific task, which any Australian industrialist would have shied away from in pre-war days. But under the pressure of deadly conflict, they are coming from the production lines in quantity. The twin wasp has 14 cylinders, arranged in two rows around the crankshaft. The completed motor is on its way to the test house, where it will be rigorously tried for flaws. In a heavily insulated room, it is hooked up to controls and run continuously for 10 hours. It's every reaction watched and noted by highly skilled engineers. After its 10-hour run, the engine will be completely dismantled, minutely examined, and then reassembled for a final test which involves another four hours running. For the final 30 minutes of its test, it is run at full rated power. When the engines finally go to the bomber, they will tear through the air at nearly 300 miles per hour. They are as near to perfect as human hands and ingenuity can make them. for aircraft production, Senator Cameron, is an interested spectator as the Beaufort is prepared for the test pilot. The highly intricate and immensely strong locally manufactured retractable undercarriage must be finally checked. You would be staggered if you knew how rapidly completed Beauforts are leaving the production line. The test pilot is gone and is sheeping. Flaps down, she's coming into land, slipping reluctantly from the sky. Back to a perfect three-pointer. The ship's okay in every respect. She's given a grand performance. In no time, she's on her way to the RAAF to join the rapidly growing bomber squadrons of the service. Those youngsters know what to do with fine aircraft, and they can use all the Beauforts they can get beneath their flying feet. they sweep into their natural element, finest aircraft of their type produced in the world today, flown by pilots whose skill and daring has won them fame in practically every theater of war in this world upheaval. Great birds of battle, viciously taloned, soaring warily in search of any who would seek to disturb the nest which through 150 years of history has never been disturbed by alien hands. Young men climb the stairways to the stars. Youth rides the glorious highways of the heavens with grim adventure huddled close at every elbow that freedom may live. There wings Australian achievement, sturdy, efficient. May it be that the serene surety of their flight points the road destiny has planned for the Australian people, when the smoke and flame and suffering of war is at an end. Fly on, Beaufort, and may victory fly with you.